Hi, it's Wednesday, September 24th. It's been a bit of a quiet September so far in the Atlantic, but we do have multiple systems to talk about this week. We've got two invests, 94L and 93L, both of which may develop into tropical storms over the next few days, which is what this video will be mostly about. I do want to briefly shout out Hurricane Gabriel, which has recurved east of Bermuda and has been a non-threat to any land areas, which is why you've seen no videos from me about this. But it is going to make a pass through the Azores Islands here on its way towards Europe as it transitions into a extra tropical cyclone and hurricane conditions are possible in the archipelago as Gabriel roars through. Hurricane warnings are in effect from the National Hurricane Center for this area. So hoping for everyone's safety as this storm blows through over the next couple of days. We're going to take a look now at two tropical waves which have been moving in tandem west northwestward across the central atlantic over the last couple of days we've got 93l 94l we're going to tackle the eastern one first so this is 93l and this will likely very shortly be a tropical depression or storm i imagine the national hurricane center will initiate advisories on this upcoming cycle which is about 90 minutes from the time that i'm recording this at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The reason I say that is there is an obvious closed, tight, well-defined, low-level circulation center right there before it tucks underneath the clump of thunderstorms on the northeast side at the end of the loop. So this is well-defined, clearly there, and has had deep convection associated with it, making this a tropical cyclone. You can see some upper level cirrus streaming out of the west from the left hand side of your screen which is uh, indicating some wind shear that is pushing most of this thunderstorm activity off to the northeast side and this shear may persist or even get a little worse over the next couple of days so the initial part of 93l's life as a tropical cyclone will likely be one where strengthening is slow to come by uh, you'll see that here on the european model 200 millibar wind showing the storm developing here into this westerly wind belt aloft indicating that shear. This is associated with an upper level trough oriented like this to the northwest of the storm. And that persists as we get towards the weekend. So Thursday, Friday, it's still fighting with this trough. By the time we get into Saturday, the storm more or less moves underneath the trough and the trough begins to erode due to the convective heating from the thunderstorms associated with 93L. At this point, it will likely have the name Humberto, which is next up on the list for a named tropical storm. So I'll just call this Humberto here, begins intensifying and becomes a hurricane underneath a more classic upper level anticyclonic outflow pattern as the upper level trough disintegrates on Saturday evening and Sunday. So at that point, we're likely to see a stronger storm and the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center will likely depict this becoming a hurricane at some point as it moves northwestward well to the north of the Caribbean. You can see briefly on the moisture plot here, there's that asymmetry associated with the sheer dry air on the western side, moisture on the eastern side, and then you'll see the storm become a more symmetric green ball after the vertical shear relaxes. So at least for the short term, that's 93L's story, likely to be slow to get started, but will intensify as it moves northwestward into the western Atlantic. Longer term, things might get a little more complicated as it interacts with the other system, 94L, over the northeastern Caribbean. So let me give you an introduction to that one. Here's the zoomed in visible loop of this tropical wave and this does not have a closed circulation like the other one does. You'll see some south southeasterly flow here, northeasterly flow coming through the gap between the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, and there's a trough axis somewhere in between here with associated convection, thunderstorms, and possible flash flooding concerns in the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico today spreading into Hispaniola over the next day or two. That'll be the primary concern from this short term, but there's nothing well defined here, no real structure. There's a hint of mid-level rotation due, a, due to mesoscale convective effects to the south of Puerto Rico, but the actual tip of the wave axis with the most low-level turning is near Puerto Rico itself and will continue moving northwestward, most likely ending up north of Hispaniola and near the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas in a few days. So if we look at the European model for this one, you'll see that the, the wave is rather weak in the model to, to start with, uh, but as we progress over the coming couple of days and into the weekend, you'll see there's a little bit of rotation here scooting north of the coast of Hispaniola, both at the mid-levels and at the surface. And this ends up moving through the Turks and Caicos into the Bahamas and beginning to amplify and becoming a closed circulation in the middle of the Bahamas sometime during the weekend. 
This has been a little bit of a challenge to forecast because it's going to be interacting with the tall terrain of the Greater Antilles, and it's also really weak and diffuse right now. So the exact location where development might occur is going to be difficult to constrain, at least for the next couple of days. Most models agree that the bulk of the energy associated with the system will stay north of the Caribbean. There have been a couple of hints that the southern side could become more amplified. So if you look at the European Ensemble showing the potential locations of the wave, you'll see that some of the members start developing a closed low in the Bahamas, as we just saw, but you'll also see one or two members show an amplification to the south of Cuba as well. This is not a majority outcome on most of the models, uh, but it is a minority that shows you that there is kind of a wider area where this could try to develop just because it's a broad wave axis right now. There's kind of this elongated zone where the turning could consolidate as the whole thing translates to the northwest and interacts with complex topography. So we don't yet know the full story on where or even if this will develop. The other thing to note here is that there's 51 members of the European Ensemble. We don't have 51 members showing development. It's a substantially uh, smaller fraction than that on the most recent run that shows development. So it's possible that uh, development may not occur at all with 94L. But at the moment, a majority of models do depict a tropical cyclone forming somewhere in the Bahamas and beginning to move north. Now, you'll also see the cloud of members showing where Humberto would be, or what is currently 93L. And you'll see there's some spread and some uncertainty with that as well. Here's Bermuda for reference. And now I'm going to have to start tying these two together because what you'll notice immediately is that these two are in proximity to each other. These two systems may develop as a pair in a tandem. And the problem with that is they may do a little dance with each other. And what I mean by that is when these two systems are this distance apart, which is only about 600 miles, 1,000 kilometers, they could influence each other's steering. And storms that are close to each other tend to orbit or attempt to orbit each other. That doesn't mean that they will actually do full loops, but it's something called the Fujiwara effect, where the circulation of each storm influences the other. So it's no longer just about troughs and ridges steering these storms. It is about the interaction between the two, something technically known as binary interaction. I'm going to show you that here on the ECMWF AI model depiction of the 500 millibar heights over the next few days. This is in three days valid Saturday afternoon Eastern time. This is what would be Humberto, the one that's likely to develop first, currently 93L. Harder to see, but in the Bahamas here is currently 94L. That would be named Imelda if it develops. And what you'll see right away here is to the north, there's this well-defined Bermuda High or subtropical ridge that you can see with the island of Bermuda right there to the left of that H. And this is a well-defined ridge that has been well forecast by most models, and that's going to be directing Humberto towards the northwest. And this is a well-defined track forecast for this storm at this point. Now with Imelda, or what might become Imelda over the Bahamas, uh, we've got a trough over the southeastern U.S. that's digging into the Carolinas and down into Florida and the eastern Gulf. And so this is directing a river of southwesterly flow up the U.S. eastern seaboard, kind of around this Bermuda High. So there's this river of flow towards the north. And if 94L slash Imelda is north of the Caribbean like this, it's going to start turning towards the north. That's a pretty easy call right there, given the steering features that are forecast by most modeling. If it happens to be over the Greater Antilles or even south of the Greater Antilles, things might become a little more complicated because it's farther away from this river of flow. Uh, but as long as it's north of the Caribbean, it's likely to make a turn here. So this is not really a pattern where we're jamming things into Florida from the east. That doesn't mean it can't get close to Florida before turning, uh, but a turn toward the north near or east of the U.S. is expected in a scenario like this. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated. If I move this forward, you'll see 94L appear here in the Bahamas and begin making that turn. Here comes Humberto towards the northwest. You still see the well-defined ridge here. The problem is this trough does begin to weaken over the southeast U.S. and it starts to disappear. You'll see another building ridge moving into the Great Lakes region in the Midwest and lifting the jet stream well to the north here. So things get a little complex. Now the two storms are beginning to close in on each other with 94 and 93. 
relatively close together, and at this point, they may begin to influence each other's steering. There's still a little bit of an upper trough over the Appalachians, but not much. Now, Humberto in isolation is going to try to move around this ridge and recurve over water, uh, but if it's too close to the other storm, it's possible there could be some slingshot action that brings it a little closer to shore before making the final turn. It's hard to say at this time because already this forecast that I'm showing you is about six days out. Lots of uncertainty at that range, especially with all the moving parts that we have here. If I go forward on this particular model run, you'll see that Humberto does escape the influence of what would be a Melda here and ends up going out to sea. And we start to see the, the subtropical jet stream showing up here, broad westerlies in the mid to upper levels. We're getting into late September. It's pretty difficult to develop strong closed blocking ridges over the northeast that can jam these things westward for very long. So these are both starting to turn and you'll see both Humberto and Amelda end up moving northeastward in the vicinity of Bermuda and then out to sea on this particular model run. But that's just one model run and we've had a variable uh, number of solutions from different models some of which get closer to the u.s with either or both storms depending on the evolution of this next ridge coming over canada and the great lakes and the interaction with each other again there could be some slingshotting action as these two try to orbit each other i will say that at the moment the majority of model solutions do end up keeping these offshore of the u.s in some fashion Here's an example of that. This is one of the experimental AI models that Google DeepMind has developed and shared publicly. You can see that most of the ensemble solutions for what would be Humberto end up turning towards the Northeast. And the same with uh, 94L or what would be Imelda, although they develop near the Greater Antilles and Bahamas, you can see the average track here is for a turn eventually to the North and Northeast. And the number of members that directly influence the Southeastern US is just a handful out of a total of 50 members. So for now, the majority of uh, reliable model solutions keeps this east of the US, but it certainly doesn't guarantee a lack of impacts to the US just yet. The areas that should probably be monitoring these two storms the most would be Bermuda, and then the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and the Greater Antilles, where most of the impacts are likely to occur short term first with flooding as this moves through the area, and then potentially with wind as well if it does begin to develop in this area here. It's likely that conditions will be a little suboptimal for 94L. We haven't quite talked about that yet, but I'll show you here. There's a little bit of asymmetry. You'll notice that it's kind of dry on the southern half of 94L, or what would be Imelda, as it starts to move towards the north. And that's because of some wind shear that's going on because of that trough we talked about over the southeastern US. Here it is at the 200 millibar level. There's some southerly flow over the system during that time. And because of this crashing subtropical jet streak into the Gulf, we've got a dry air mass propagating into this area as well. And all that dry air could start getting wrapped into any circulation that's forming over the Bahamas. So between those two things, you do see that there's some struggles for this storm as the dry air starts to get in, and there's some shear out of the south helping to force the dry air into the circulation. So on some of these model runs, the storm struggles to get very strong, but there is a relatively strong signal in modeling that a storm will attempt to form probably weaker than Humberto, but something to watch. And again, the interaction between these two adds a little more uncertainty than we're used to for a scenario like this. And so details about how strong the storms may get or where exactly impacts may occur and how severe those impacts will be don't have a lot of details just yet, especially for this western storm. But something to keep an eye on if you're in Florida, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, and the Greater Antilles over the next couple of days Watch the forecast at hurricanes.gov from the National Hurricane Center for the latest information on these two storms. Again, the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center for this eastern system will likely be out by the time you see this video in all likelihood. Stay safe and have a plan ready to go to respond to either of these systems in case they come your way and bring threats. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.